Freeform is a brand new visual brainstorming app that's available from Apple on Mac, iPad, and iPhone. And you could actually sync any project you create on one of those platforms across all your devices. I'll show you exactly how to get started with Freeform on a Mac here in this video. And I have a dedicated iPhone and iPad video that I'll link below as well. And I'll show you exactly how to create your first project, all the different things you could do. And if you really like organizing your ideas and thoughts visually and sharing them that way, this is a really useful app. I'll show you a personal example of how I use this. I've used it since the day it came out. And I'll also show you a couple of advanced things that are really hard to find in the app, but I found them really useful, the way you could sketch and things like that. But let's get started from installing Freeform all the way to exporting our first project. Now, Freeform is an app you actually don't have to install as long as you have the update from Apple. So on your Mac, that's Ventura 13.1, and on iOS, on iPhone and iPad, that's 16.2, iOS 16.2. So to know if you have the latest update, click your Apple icon on here on your Mac. Go to about this Mac right here. And right here, make sure Ventura 13.1 or later is the operating system you're using. If not, press more info. And under general, you could actually update your Mac OS to that version and then it will automatically be installed. So to find it, I just go to the search icon right on top, type in Freeform and it will open up Freeform here. And if you're using it for the first time, you won't have any boards. You'll just see a blank page here. And on the left side, all your boards, individual boards, basically blank canvases will appear here. Recent shared favorites and recently deleted here. And you could toggle your view by clicking this icon. Now create your first board is the first thing we're gonna cover. And that's this icon right over here. I'm gonna press create a board. And let me walk you through exactly what you have. The first thing I typically like to do is I like to name my board. So this is a video tutorial, I'll name it that. So then when I always go back on this page, this first page, this will appear over here. It will basically auto save so you don't have to worry about pressing save on it. And you could just press the heart here to add it to your favorites list as well. I'll show you sharing in a bit. Now inside of this blank canvas, basically you're at 100% view, but you could really zoom way out. So you see the dots are getting slower till they disappear. And then you could zoom back in. These dots are basically just guides. You can hide them. So if you go under view here and you could hide the grid, you will get rid of those dots. I like them for design, so I'm gonna keep them up. Now the main ways you could use this is these five icons up here. So let's go here left to right. The first one is just these blank sticky notes. You could place these anywhere. You just click this and it will create one and you could move it around and you could see they have these snapping guides that are really, really useful as well. So I'm gonna snap this one and then you could add more as well like this. So let's say you were making some kind of a chart organization uh, chart, for example. Each one you could click on it once and you'll get the color option. So with sticky notes, you're a little bit limited. With some other things I'll show you, you have lots more colors to choose from. But you could change the sticky notes like this. And then this is your font options for the sticky notes. I'm gonna leave it on the default, but to type on one, you just double click here and then type your text right in the middle here. And if you select your text, you could change the font size and the alignment here, or you can make a bold italic underline and strike through. So, and once you add text, you could actually click the sticky note. I'm gonna click away and click the sticky note and the text moves with the sticky note, right? Just by default, because it's just part of the sticky note here. And if you wanted to resize it, you can make it smaller or you could just stretch it. So I'm just clicking with my mouse and dragging to change the size over here. So those are your options with sticky notes. I'm gonna click this middle one and delete it and I'll delete this one. I'll keep this one on the canvas. The second option that is really useful is all these different shapes and all these different symbols and you could actually search them too. So you have simple things like an arrow here. So you could grab an arrow and let's say you wanted to go from this box to whatever is gonna go here. That creates an arrow. Arrows could also be a straight line they could also be dotted like this. They could also have all kinds of different colors here as well, and you could make them change with this option as far as how bold or how prominent they are. Then with shapes, you also have different things like with education. A lot of these are really, really useful. So let me just use this one. I'm just gonna click it, and they're gonna 
get added to the canvas. And with these, you could also resize these as well. So I'm going to put them here. And if you click once on them, you also have colors. But with shapes, you have pretty much any color. If you press this color wheel here, let me bring this around. You have basically any color you could imagine on the color wheel. So let me make this one more of a red like this. And I'll just make it a little bit darker with this slider. And then exit out of here. And with these, you could also add text. So I could double click add text. You see that text up here. It appears over here. I could select that and make it white to make it easier to read. You can see the text appears over here on top. So explore all the different shapes that you have available to you. There's things for people, places, all kinds of different things. But the next one is really useful. It's just text right here, free floating text, text that you could put anywhere. So if you type your text this way, you could actually, again, have all the options like color and fonts, but it could be actually added anywhere. The only thing is sometimes when you use text with combination with shapes, if I move the shape, the text is actually not part of this like it was with the sticky. So a lot of times you'll have to drag and select both of these like this. And then if you go ahead and control click on your Mac, you could group them. If you group them, now they all move together as one group. If you decide to ungroup them, again, you could right click on that group and then unselect or ungroup them here. And now you have two different individual things that you could move just like before. I found that one really useful, but it was a bit hard to find, especially on the iPad. It's really difficult to select both objects and combining them. So I like to use this on the Mac. Now your next one right here is if you click this option, you have multiple different really useful options here. You could add photos and videos. I'll show you as an example. This pulls up all kinds of things from your photos library. So I could add this video, for example, I'll press add. And you could place this anywhere as well. So you could place this here and you could basically resize this too. You can make it big and small and it has a little play icon here to press play on and it's playing it with audio as well. And you have links so you could actually add links from the internet. So if I added a website, for example, I could press insert here and then I could place this anywhere on my chart as well. And this also could be resized easily. So I'm going to leave it the default size. You also could do these three things which actually connect to your iPhone. So let me show you, for example, if I was to add a sketch, basically it brings up a sketch pad on my iPhone. So I'm going to just draw something here on my iPhone and then I'm just going to press done on my iPhone. And as you could see, let me just go ahead and move this right here. It just added this shape right here. So let me actually delete this box so I could show you this shape could be resized as well. This is just what I drew with my finger on my iPhone and I could basically place this anywhere and I could crop it as well. OK, so this is really useful. This is again under this option. I'm going to click away here and you also could do the exact same thing with taking a photo. So let me just take a photo here. I'm going to take a photo of my camera. I just took this picture right on my desk with my camera and it just appeared on my Mac. So I did, did it with my iPhone. It just appeared here on my Mac. So that's another way to quickly grab something in real life, place it on this board. And you could also scan documents. Your iPhone could scan a document with the camera. Now this last one basically pulls up your computer folders. So anything from your computer like pictures, all kinds of documents could be added this way. This is just a simple file browser that you could also use. I usually just use the video or the photos option. Now, all these options also, if you right click or control click here on a Mac, all these are available to you over here on the bottom. So take photo, scan document and add sketches from your iPhone all over here. You could also add little descriptions here too. So a description box you could add like this and press done. So now if I right click again on this picture, the description I added will be over here. If I want to add a little bit of a hidden note inside of anything that I've added here on my canvas. Now, as you build more and more on your canvas, sometimes you want to kind of zoom out here to get a better picture. And you have these slider bars here to kind of look up and down. And you have one on the bottom here to move left and right. So that's going to give you a good picture overview. On the right here, you could create a new board. So if I press this, it's going to open a new one, but I could always go back and go back to my first one that I was just using here. Or you could press the share icon right here. Now you could share this as a text message, for example, with people that have an iPhone so they could open it up and check it out. 
or you could just invite them here to edit this project. So here, who can access? Only people I invite or anyone with a link. If you say anyone with a link, you just have to copy that link over here. And if they could make changes, or maybe you just want them to view, you don't want them to actually be able to make changes, you could change that permission option over here. So now I could just press email, for example, this mail icon, and it's gonna actually say, this is something I wanna share with someone else, and I could just type in their email, send it to them that way. Again, I could use the iCloud option too with messages. Anytime you could come back to this window, all your boards will be available. You could view them as a list if you click this option as well. So you have these options available. And one thing I'll show you if you have a problem syncing this between your devices, there's a setting that I'll show you that you may need to change. So if you go to system settings, that's the application for system settings here, you could click your name if you're logged into iCloud so it could sync between the different devices and then click iCloud right here. And again, because this is a default app from Apple Freeform, you could make sure this is turned on green or blue here. Just make sure you slide it over. So this way, all your devices, as long as they have the same settings, they're gonna sync up as long as they're logged into the same iCloud account. So I could basically open up the same exact application here and make the edits on my iPhone or iPad because they all sync up. And if I've shared it with someone else, they could also make changes and it will show on my end as well. And that's your complete overview of using Freeform on your Mac. I hope you found it useful. Check out the iPhone and iPad video, link down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.